Andrea Sumlan, let me just welcome uh, welcome you, um, you know, to, to, to this, this program. Looking at it from the point of view of, you know, you're, you're there in Ukraine right now. What practically, what practically do you think can be done at G20 to address the question of the war in Ukraine, to try and see language that could perhaps make everybody happy? Or is that something which is looking more or less impossible right now? Because China and Russia have have backtracked from the position they took at Bali. That sort of language is not going to be acceptable anymore. So either you have a communique that is really wishy-washy on the question of Ukraine uh, and the war there, or you will not have a, a communique at all. At least that's what many of the analysts seem to be telling us. I think one would simply uh, need to come back to the basic principles of the United Nations, of the international order, not of the international liberal order, but of international order in general, that borders are inviolable, that uh, states have territorial integrity and political sovereignty. One does not even have to mention Ukraine. If one um, if one puts that in there and and then says that it also relates to among other countries Ukraine, that would be already sufficient. Uh, it would be, of course, against the um, the interests of Russia that does not recognize the um, the borders and territorial integrity and political sovereignty of Ukraine. Uh, but maybe one can find a formulation that would be generic enough. Um, to at least uh, put down again these principles that is perhaps the best one, could, one can achieve at this point.